All right, we've got ourselves a little gable roof here with a window and a load-bearing wall. And the idea is to find a lintel that will span that opening, and we might use the timber framing code and smart frame as an alternative. But before we go anywhere, we better get some info. So uh, one of the things that we would need would be the width of the building. So that's 7.2. Uh, we'll need to know the width of the eaves. That's all contributes to the roof load. So that's 600. We would need to know the slope of the roof. So I'm reading up here 25 degrees. Um, if we're using timber framing code, we might want to calculate the roof load width. So that's uh, that's uh, six. Uh, there it is. There four six three four. Um, we better know the. We better find out the um, window opening size. So that is 2100. Smart frame, we want to know how much wall there is above the window. So we've got 220 mil. That's weather techs on the outside. Uh, what have we got on the roof? We've got some tiles there on the roof and jip rock on the underneath side. And we better know find out how far apart these trusses are so if I just click on there and there and take that up trusses are at 600 centers so that's probably all we need to know wing class N3 and we'll start off with MGP 10 timber so the first thing you do is go to the supplements that have uh, MGP 10 in N4 and you go to table 18 because table 18 is the lintels for a tiled roof single or upper story load bearing walls and we'd be on 600 uh, 6 meters roof load width it was uh, what was it 4634 so that's in this category here and the trusses were at 600 Center. So what we're doing is we're coming down this list here and I'll just uh, hold control down and zoom in because we're coming down here looking for a 2100 because that's how wide the, the opening was. So there it is there. And so what I'm saying is that, or what I'm seeing is that I need two at 190 by 35 in the timber framing code to actually do the job. There's no other tables that I could use to uh, do that there are there are uh, supporting some concentrated roof loads but that's about it so two 190 by 35s for the timber framing code right let's have a look at smart frame and see what that says i'll just open up the smart frame and um, see if it'll fire up fairly quickly it's um it uh, tells me my, my registration is just about out. Okay, uh, I want to create a new job. That's all right. Uh, what do I call it? I'll call it uh, CPD082014 and uh, what will the reference be? I can go tape and it'll want to know what state I'm in. It won't let you go past this and it'll want to know what category. And if you just click highlight, hover over those they tell you and it's category one so that's good righto and it wants to know do you want to save it so i'll save it on the desktop so it puts it puts a whole heap of stuff there that we can delete in a minute and then we go quick design it tells me again my registration is up for renewal and then i want wall now what do i want in the wall i actually want a lintel in an upper story single story so that's the first one that comes up but have a look what happens when you go down this list it gives you the lintels for all of the different uh, scenarios including a picture and all of these single span with overhangs continuous span two spans three, all of those options and look how many lintels there are look how many lintel options there are this is this is like a real building isn't it 
and you can go through all of that list and select which ones you want. So we're back up to the top up here, looking for a lintel in an upper story, uh, a single story job. And we would go single span, and we would say, are the ends supported by brackets? No, Mr. Tillings, I don't want to buy your brackets. So that'll do. And um, it comes up here with the picture. So how good's that? We've accepted that model. The rafter of truss spacing. What was that? 600. The lintel span, 2100. Uh, the wall height above the window was 220. The roof load width. If you don't know what the roof load width, you go to roof load, the calculator, truss type. What was that span? 72. What was the pitch in degrees? 25. Uh, the left hand eave was 600. And the right hand eave was 600. And I'll just click back out of that. And so now I've got wall A at 4634 and wall B. So I can select whichever one I like of those. Got to click on it. And it puts your calculation up in there. Oh, seriously. What else does it want? It wants the roof dead load. Have a look at this. It gives you all of these options. All of these options. We were uh, terracotta tile and battens with a s and ceiling roofing and ceiling battens plaster saki that'll do that's 75 kgs per square meter okay that's my roof load what about the wall load uh we were weather techs with plasterboard on the inside that one okay um what was my wind speed i was n4 wasn't i okay and now we have a choice of timbers all of the choices of timber I mean, seriously, that's all the timbers you could possibly get. We were going for MGP at the moment, and we were going for MGP 10, 12, or 15, 10. And what it's saying there is that a 70 by 35 is no good because we've gone, we, that's in there by default. You could ask it to design the member, and it says that 290 by 45 is okay at 85% of its capacity. But we wanted... Um, we actually wanted two members. I don't know if it'll design for two. It seems to take it back to one. So let's go two here and go for, say, 140. 140 is no good with two. What about 190? Two 190 by 45s is great. It's actually 76% of its capacity. What about two 190 by 35s? That's what the timber framing code says. And it's saying that it's 97% of its capacity. Geez, that's close to 100. 5% maximum deflection. You're going to be asking for trouble there. So so I'd be probably looking at 40, not, uh, 2 at 190 by 45 at 76% of its capacity. If I want to have a look at, you know, what are my other options, I might have Cypress in mind. I've, I've certainly got MGP, 10, uh, MGP in mind. And I might think, oh, geez, I've got some smart LVL there too. Um, I'll just go number of options one, uh, number of, and you can go from one to, say, two. And um, how many options per timber do, you, do we want? Two? Okay, we'll calculate that. And it'll just go through that process fairly quickly. We haven't picked that many. And it gives you all of these options. All of these options. Uh, so your 2190 by 35s are there. To, uh, 1290 by 45 uh, so you could pick you could pick whichever one of those you want and uh, go okay and uh, and there's the information of course if you want to view your results you can get the technical data all ready to show the council inspector or whoever you wish and if um, if uh, you feel like it, you can go up here and you can view the schedule and that'll save it. And you can end up with all of this and provided you've got it marked up properly, you get a full list of all of your information for your job. Seriously, that is a great program. Um, of course, you'll always need to go to the 
you'll always need to go back to the, I'm just waiting for that to close down always need to go back to the timber framing code to see um, to see how things are put together and if you go to section 6 wall framing openings there look at the information you've got in the timber framing code you won't find this anywhere else how actually to put these things together how it all how it all fits look at that different alternatives and specifications that are really important. Not many people under this. So uh, there you go. I'll leave it to you. Timber framing code or tillings for selecting your members. Always a timber framing code for how things go together. How good is that? And how good is SketchUp? <laughs>